I now call on Dr. Scott to address convocation. Thank you very much. It's obviously an extraordinary privilege to be here. Uh, I don't know what to say about that introduction, but uh, I wish my mother, who was on her cloud now, that was here. But um, um, let me start by, of course, saying that it is not only an honor to be here, but it's an honor to be graduating with this inaugural class from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. Uh, some 22 years ago, I left that institution that is a little bit to the west of us called the University of Toronto and was lured happily to the University of Victoria. And so it came to pass that I was there when the first UVic engineering class graduated. And they were an unusually bright, energetic group that as I've watched through their careers have had really extraordinarily successful and personally rewarding careers. And that experience has caused me to wonder why. And it seems to me there's something special about inaugural classes. Uh, first, they had the courage to chance a new school, and so, by the way, did the inaugural professors. And so, to me, it seems to make a good mix. So I really look forward to wonderful things happening from you graduates. By the way, and while congratulating you, I must acknowledge and congratulate your families. Sometimes we think parents, if they're able, sometimes provide money to have you here, but the truth is that they do a lot of sweating in their gut on whether their daughter or son are going to make it. Well, you all know they made it because they're here. They are graduates. You can see I rather like the role that science and technology can play in science, and I want to make a comment or two on the extraordinary intimacy, extraordinary intimacy between culture and technology. Take one example that you all know. In the last 200 years, lifespans have expanded from about 38 years to now a little more than 80. The life sciences obviously contributed. Nursing, Florence Nightingale, Dr. Lister, and so on. That led against the flight of inventions. I mean, it's a fundamental thing to wash your hands after you've performed surgery, and so on. The physical sciences, and in particular engineering, also contributed. Take sewage, which used to run down streets, spreading typhus and the like. Engineers were the guys who came along, decided to put that underground in sewers. Think of the impact of that. As an example you might not have considered, I'll suggest the abolition of slavery. It was on the green of Glasgow. I'd gone for a walk on a Sabbath afternoon. I was thinking upon the engine. Thus James Watt in 1765 reflected on his, his idea of external condensation of steam rather than internal condensation of steam. And that, as everyone here knows, allowed the Industrial Revolution. Maybe few appreciate this, that before steam engines, all the work of lifting, plowing, digging, building walls, all the rest, could only be done by either wind or falling water or muscle. After steam engines, anything that could provide heat, burning wood, coal, oil, even fissioning uranium, could be converted into work. Can you get your head around that significance? Think back. Before we had steam engines and, the, and, the, and their, their offspring and internal combustions and the rest of it, it was only muscle, fin, and want, falling water. The best you could do is have a billy goat or a horse do some of the muscle work. This freed people from drudgery. Fewer people needed to manually pick cotton or lift stones or dig canals or dig ditches. Many more people were set free to write symphonies and books, to design buildings and build buildings and highways and automobiles, to research the causes of disease and to deliver health care on and on and on. 
until the steam engine, essentially all large civilizations were built upon slavery. From the Egyptians, to the Romans, to the British, what do you think a Shanghai sailor was, except for a slave? America started that way too, but then along came steam engines, followed by the steam engines kith and kin, like the internal combustion engines. After that, after we had those technologies, what was there left for slaves to do? Most folks like to think the maturing of social values led to the abolition of slavery. I think the invention of steam engines had a lot of to do with it and was the foundation. Now we begin the 21st century. Climate volatility, the greatest, I think, the greatest environmental challenge ever to face civilization is upon us. It's not a few degrees of warming that are dangerous. It is the, for example, the acidification of oceans which absorb CO2 and threaten the phytoplankton that is the basis for all oceanic life. It is the rising ocean levels that will attack and ultimately overwhelm most of the world's large cities because the majority of the world's cities live on coastlines. And it is the wars that will result as people and nations fight for survival. Today, in my view, those who would deny this risk are either, have either, possess either, a unique immunity to scientific evidence or a craven ability to distort it. Not time to explain why, but it's clear that my view is that nuclear and hydrogen are the ways to our solution, and I think that it's important to note that all these systems are now being worked on vigorously and successfully at UOIT. In 1980, I attended my first World Hydrogen Energy Conference. It was in Japan, and it was my first visit to Japan. I set out to absorb to breathe in as much as I could of the Japanese culture. I visited the historic sites in Kyoto and Nara, walked alone through steep streets, stopping, listening, watching. I stumbled upon a bookstore, and in it I found an English translation of Yukio Mishima's The Temple of the Dawn, The Temple of the Dawn, I'm sorry, in which I read, the will to engage oneself in history is the essence of human purpose. The will to engage oneself in history is the essence of human purpose. I wish you, which I like to claim as my fellow, fellow graduates, the energy, courage, and good luck as each in your own way set out to engage yourself in history. Thank you very much.